So, hi folks, Kyle here. We are going to talk today about kind of how to fill out a convention card. Um, this is sort of plan, planned um, for like more intermediate players who maybe know kind of what their common system is and want help guiding through like all the different gadgets and stuff that they could potentially add to their card and like what different things mean when they look at other people's cards. Um, I want to fulfill a more like beginner focus, like what does a basic bidding system look like? Um, but I guess this video is filmed more towards filming, filling out a convention card. Um, we're also filming this live on one of my streams because why not? Um, so if there's commentary and I pause, um, then there might be that interruption. So, okay. So let's think about how do we fill out a common convention card, I guess. I'll kind of walk through what I think is like a standard card um, and maybe suggest some upgrades. So most people today will play two over one game for us, and that means sequences like, you know, um, it's any jump or it's any non-jump to the two levels, so like a diamond, two clubs, a major, two minor, um, a spade, two hearts. Did I hit them all? There are no two over one bids over a club opening because all new suits are jumps. So it's any simple new suit is, um, and the agreement is this creates a game force. Um, you'll see a lot of other people. Some people will play this as just invitational values are better and forcing around. Um, so I would say most people like know, know what that agreement is, and it kind of it affects further auctions down the line, such as like openers rebid over a sequence like this will will change depending on if this bid is forcing or not. It's a lot easier to play it as forcing the game. Um, it'll most everyone will play it at least forcing one round because new suits are forcing. Um, so I think the common convention card, if we're gonna put one together today, everyone everyone plays two over one. Um, the second thing on the card is very light. So this is like do you open, do you open essentially ten points or lighter in third seat? And I think most people at least would consider opening it with their right hand. They would open a little light. So um, I typically check third hand light on a convention card. Um, because you don't want you don't want your opponents to be surprised. I mean, if you're playing with someone where you know that you have an agreement explicitly not to open light, I would uncheck that. But I think the general style is to anticipate partner might open light in third. So if you, I guess this is very light, which is probably like a king a king less than your normal opener. So maybe maybe it's maybe the maybe the the guess by the ACBL is that like this should show eight like like are you opening eight nine counts or a balance ten or I don't know. Um, but if you open, so this is just, if, if you know that you open light in style, you might check this, um, or you might not. Uh, everyone plays a forcing two club openings, which is artificial, shows a game force if you're unbalanced or, you know, 22 to 24 balanced. Um, everyone plays that, so you want to have that checked. Um, next, moving into no trump opening bids for a card. Um, everyone plays standard 15 to 17. Um, next, you want to check five card major, um, which the modern style is. If you have a five card major, you don't like one node doesn't one node doesn't deny a five card major, and the reason for that is like the common sequence on why you open one node um, with fifteen to seventeen a five card major, why you can't open it one major is let's say it goes like a heart one no trump, um, or a heart spade like a heart a heart one x basically opener is stuck because a one no rebid if it's available shows twelve to fourteen. Um, a new suit is three plus cards. Um, and so there are hands where you can't appropriately describe your strength if you open a heart one X, um, unless you play a convention called Gazilli, which is not standard and no one plays. And if you're playing with a pickup partner, you're not going to be able to show the strength of 15 to 17 points balance when you open like a heart. So, I mean, you could get a, same with like a spade one. No, I guess you could get away with faking a three card suit. Um, but like you're gonna be you're gonna be stuck to show that strength, um, and it's best to get it off your chest early because systematically you don't have a way to show that strength range, um, normally. I mean, some people some people will play the auction like a major two x three no shows fifteen to seventeen balance, but unless, if partner is less than the game force, you don't have a way to show your hand, um, and that's a big problem. Um, if you're concerned about finding five three majors two fits, you can definitely find them. Uh, with some other conventions um, after opening one row. So it's not like, it's not, it's not a loss by any means. Um, so next we come to this systems on over. 
Um, everyone plays systems on over double, essentially, because double, even if it's, double is so commonly artificial by the opponents these days after a strong window opening that you should just play your normal statement and stuff on. People could be doing stuff light, and you want to be able to account for that. Um, the other place you can play systems on is over an artificial or or even natural two club bid, um, because it doesn't you 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 gain space double replaces two clubs. Um, some people call this stolen bid, um, and you can definitely always get that back. So like, th there's no reason not to play systems on two clubs is some artificial nonsense, and you still have your normal business to describe your hand. Um, anything higher, however, um, you do play systems off. Um, we'll get into that if we talk about like Glaben saw in a minute. Um, so everyone plays statement. Everyone plays Jacoby transfers, which are bid the the major, the super lower your major. Um, two spades, two no. Um, things differ how people approach. I think if I if I were putting together a basic standard card, I mean this would be natural no four card major. So, um, eight to nine balanced, and then I think, um, if you're playing like the robots, um, you might play two spades as clubs. And you might play three diamonds as diamonds. Um, I prefer a structure where the hands in two no are in are are. I prefer, I prefer a structure where the club. Um, maybe it should be six plus. By the way, if that wasn't clear, if you're forcing the three level, you need extra length. Um, it's like the law. You need at least an eight card fit. Don't want to play in your seven card fit at the three level. That's bad. Um, but filling in a standard card, I think like this is what I'd fill in. Um, you could play two spades as a two-way strength asker clubs, and then now two no can be diamonds, and then now three dime three clubs is free. Um, for puppet salmon, um, if I ever make an advanced card video of this, um, that's what I talk about. Um, so if you if you're curious, Google puppet salmon one no three clubs puppet, um, and you know two no becomes diamonds, and then you have room. So um, I won't talk about that today. Um, think about the rest of the three level. So if you don't have puppet, I like I think common is to play three diamonds as five five miners game force. Um, and the reason for that is these distributional miner slams when partner is too suited are hard to find. Um, stamen when you start with stamen, you know usually that shows at least a major. So like major minor hands are or major major hands aren't too hard to find, but the hands with both minors are very hard to describe after a one no opener. Um, to to like look for a fit and stay low is hard. So most people play three diamonds as minor game force. Um, responses to this are a little weird. Um, I play a very special like three major response to three diamonds. I'd say with most partners, unless you're at a serious partnership, just wing it. Um, you could play three hearts, flags, clubs, and three spades, flags, diamonds, or you can play them as, uh, you know, a stopper willing to play three no here, playing willing to play three no if this is your shortness, but um, just when you with a pickup partner, like you, if if slam is right, slam is right, you're not going to get in trouble. Um, it's really about that like extra three level punt that's available. Um, these I like, uh, these can be really whatever you want. Um, a standard card would probably be, like, six plus major slam interest. Um, um, expert standard might be, like, three other major, expert standard would probably be sh three other major shortness. Um, but I think if you're playing with a pickup partner, um, most people won't have the sophistication in their methods to deal with this, so maybe... Maybe you want to maybe you want your forcing slam interest hands that demand cubits. Maybe you want them to be three major direct, um, because that is a hand that's a hard hand to show without space without consuming space. Um, everyone plays Texas. Um, Texas should maybe be on through like three diamond interference. Um, I've heard different things. Um, you definitely want to play Texas on over two level interference. You, you should pick your tolerance level at the three level um is something that has come up with different partners um then you play down through three clubs because four four diamonds is hard it's now like you might want that cubid to be both majors game force you know if you if you can't cubid their suit it becomes an issue um so i i play i think i play texas on with most of my partners through three clubs 
because you want you want that both major Cupid still available, and that's more that's probably more important than than the transfer because you could be a force in three major. Um, um, small end most people know about it's when you stamen. So small end is the sequence like one no, two clubs, two diamonds, and then three like hearts. Three hearts shows five plus spades, four plus hearts. It's a retransfer of the three level because partner had uh, both major stamen hand. Um and they want they want partner to play it essentially because they have a game forcing value. So small end is just a nice little way to do that. And then if you don't know about Labensall, um Lavensaw is a good gadget anyone needs to play. Um, it's about, you know, when they overcall two diamonds or higher, you want to you want to be able to, if you have room, you want to have a bid that's a, a place to play in a suit, a way to invite in a suit, and a way to gain force in the suit. Um, and Lavensaw here, you know, um, basically two level is to play um, if available. If, the, if it's not available, um, Direct three X is game force, and then going through two no is either invitational or the weak or the drop bid. Um, maybe that hopefully that makes sense as a little refresher if you know Labensall. If you don't know Labensall, um, it's not something you need necessarily. You don't need to play full Labensall, but it's an it's a good gadget. Um, as you develop, it's definitely one of the top things to add to your card. Um, the negative doubles people will differ on this. Um, the old style is to play. I think the two level is penalty and the three level is takeout. The modern style is to play doubles at all level or takeout or negative for the other major because you want to you want to you know reopen a little lighter with shortness and not necessarily force to game. Um, I prefer the modern style. Know what you play with your partner. Um, moving on for filling out the rest of the card, two knows like twenty to twenty one. You could play Puppet, um, particularly if you like play this Puppet gadget over here. Usually, then usually you kind of match it. The pup one of three clubs Puppet's a little different because you have Stamen available. Not getting into that today, um, but worth considering. Um, three Spades. Most people will play that as like relay to three no, and then you know you'll either Q shortness with both with both, and then you either basically four minors natural. Four major is five five shortness. Four major is five five of shortness in the bid suit. I think it's a lot of probably will play this like three spade relay, and you could flip flop them. I've heard that's called like Washington Standard or something. Um, there there are good ideas out there about that. Um, but like this is what I would consider kind of a standard gadget. I think the bots might play three spades as minor statement still, which is dumb. Um. Major openings. Um, this is fun. Everyone opens five card majors. You could agree to four and third, but you don't need to check that. I think most people won't deviate without agreement. Um, I have very particular taste on like what one major, three major should be. I like that as like a mixed raise, but not that's not common at all. I play like a modified Bergen structure. If you're not playing Bergen, I'd say standard raises are either. Basically, Invitational. I mean, that's the standard raise. One major, three major is Invitational. Um, so that's how you notate it. If you play Bergen, you know, Bergen is three clubs and three diamonds. One is Invitational, one is Constructive, and then one major, three major is weak. You would write that here. Three clubs, Bergen, yada, yada. If you're going to do that, everyone plays Jacoby 2-0. No. That's the box for this. Um, everyone plays Splinters, so definitely check that. Um, a major 3 no. Some people either play as some sort of advanced splinter, or they will play it as balanced choice of games. If you play it as choice of games, meaning it shows three card support for the major, you check this box. If you don't have that agreement, you just, 3 no is natural, you leave it unchecked. Um, one major, one no. Most people play this as forcing. Um, I think the more, I think slowly what's becoming the modern standard is semi forcing. So you might check that instead. So if partner partner's allowed to pass one no with 11, 12 points, and uh if partner's allowed to pass one no with a 12 point balanced hand, then you check semi forcing. Um I think the more modern style is you don't have to bid the shitty three card minor fragment if you're not gonna accept game later, which is understandable. 
Um, I think the old style was maybe some minimum game forces were in, like, one no, and so you'd want that to be forcing. Um, like, some people would put the choice of game hand in one no, I think, in the olden days, and then a spade, a major three no, might be their mini splinter structure, or, you know, some extra two-tiered splinter thing. So, but most people don't play that. Most people have no reason. Most people will not bid a forcing one no without, with less than, with game forcing value. So if you're not doing that, then it can be semi forcing. Um, I recommend semi forcing. I think most people play a semi forcing no trump and don't realize it. They just like, well, you know, two for one is the forcing no trump and yada, yada, yada. And they don't pay attention to that stuff. Um, most people play jury. Um, standard jury is actually called reverse jury. So reverse jury is two clubs, shows three plus support and a maximum past hand. Um, it's reverse jury because when jury was invented, like a lot of these bad conventions um the inferior way of playing it was invented first someone thought let's use two diamonds as jury um some people play two-way so they use two clubs and two diamonds to distinguish between three and four plus support nothing wrong with that you do that check the two-way box um if you play jury check check one way reverse that's the proper way to notate it um if you're playing a natural if you're if you're not playing an if 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 you're playing Jacoby, you can leave this middle box blank because you don't need a range. Um, if you're playing a natural 3-0, you put in your natural point range there. Um, minor openings. Uh, everyone plays these 3+. plus. Um, if you, like, the, the common minor holding hand is this, like, 4 4 3 2 shape that people don't quite know what to do with. Um, like, a minor, especially a diamond, is often 4. Um... Except when you're the shape, you should open a diamond. Some people will open a club with this shape. Um, I don't recommend it unless you're playing... Um, what would you have to be playing? If you're playing like a transfer Walsh rebid style or something funky with a short club, sure, you could you could open... Um, you could have a diamond be pure with four and fold those hands in a club. If you're playing with a standard... Pick a partner in a club or something. You don't need to do that. Um, just check three. Just check three card minimum for both. You don't want to be alerting. Could be short. Every hand, like, there's no reason to lie. Like, it's it's gonna be harder. If you, if you put this hand in a club, it's gonna be harder to make your minor seed raises. You don't want to do that to yourself. Um, so I recommend, you know, always open your longer three card minor. Don't 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 cause stuff like that. Uh, if you're playing. Minor two raises. I think most people, the standard style is inverted, so one one two is at least forcing the three minor. Uh, could be forcing the two no, but forcing the three minor is better. Um, maybe I shouldn't even mention that. So one two is forcing, and therefore one three is weak. Um, you should think about like your point ranges. So is one three weak like six to nine, or could it be zero to five? Um, essentially, for like your one minor, three minor sequence, you want to know can opener bid three no with eight to nineteen balanced, um, and so you should have an agreement with partner is weak at least six, or is weak like zero to five. Um, if you you can play the zero to five, the fix to that is you either play a convention called crisscross, where jump shift from the other minor shows a missing range, or you can just fold those into uh, one no is like six to nine could have support kind of thing. I've seen that fix too. Um, minor suit raises are a whole mixed bag of stuff. Um, I was talking about one minor, two minor as well. And is this forcing the two no or three minor? So essentially, can you pass like this sequence? And that will affect, um, I like the sequence as forcing. Some people don't. Some people like to fix that problem inherently by making one minor, two minor game forcing. There's a lot of ways to think about minor raises. Um, I guess if you have questions and you want to talk about it, you can go to my Discord and ask system questions about minor raises. Like, and I'll probably, if I ever make more of these videos, I will make one of minor raises because they're really interesting and there's a lot you could do here. Um, I think minor, I think a standard for minor raises is actually harder than major raises, believe it or not. So, um, but let's say standard is to play some taste of inverted minors. Um, one no here, I mean, some people put 6 to 10, I put like 7 to 10, 8 to 10. 
You don't need to you don't need a force play with one now upon like a four card major on a really light hand. I mean often you're just raising the minor weekly. Um Tuno is invitational. Some the old style was to play a minor Tuno is like a strong forcing hand. Um and like one no is a little firmer, I think. Um so don't worry about this like forcing box. I think same over here, it's a little confusing because Jacoby is forcing. So you don't don't have to worry about filling that out. Um, I'm droning out a lot, and I don't want these videos to be too long. So I think I'm splitting this video into two parts. This this video, um, we're gonna stop once we cover the first half of the convention card, and then I'll talk about competitive bidding, um, in another video. So um, that information, I'll shut up because that will be in the description of the video. Um, this is what happens when I fill these videos ad hoc. Like I. I don't know what I'm doing till I'm at the end of the video, and then it's very meta, and looks bad. So sorry about that. Um, hope you're following along. Um, so two clubs should be like your 22 plus hands. You're afraid. You know when you open two clubs, it should be you have four and a half losers. I, I like to define it as 18 plus about 18 plus four and a half losers, or 22 plus any. Um, and basically, it should be a game force if you're unbalanced. If you're balanced, you can, 22 to 24, you can skid out if partner shows a negative. Um, most people will play two arts bust, I think, is the modern style, because there was something called cheap or negative that sucks. Um, no ace king. And then all the responses are natural. You might do two no equals hard, hard positive. Positives are like... A positive looks something like two of the top three honors, like king, queen, fifth, and eight points or more. Um, that's like what a positive looks like. Um, you play this bus bid early so that partner essentially so um, you can get out like in two no. Because the problem is like 20. You could play something called Kokish, which fix this problem, but essentially, like, you're stronger. Your you're balance hand's stronger than 24. It helps them to know if you're negative right away because they don't want to jump and consume a lot of space because normally you don't have gadgets to figure out what to do with that kind of hand. So, like, it, it just it helps keep everything low. You want to be able to just know what, what which of – you want to know which of openers, rebids, are forcing and – you want to know if your, your, your two no rebid is forcing over two clubs, two diamonds, so it helps. Um, don't worry about it. It's two no oh, two clubs openings are can be a little tricky, and there's you run into space issues that are a little complex. Um, we play these as weak. I like them as like four to ten. Um, and six plus cards is what's standard. Some people will do five card preamps. Don't worry about five card preamps if you don't. If if you when you when you're ready for them, you'll they'll be there. Um, if that's your style, it's not a lot of people's style. Um, maybe third seed at imps, but otherwise you really don't need to think about five card preamps unless you're playing something that isn't two over one. Um, and you're really aggressive, so good for you. Um, that's also me. So whatever. Um, so there's two ways. You can play feature here. So essentially bad hands, rebid their suit, good hands, show an ace or king. Or queen, show a top honor. Um, or you can play august, which is steps like, um, usually I think of it as min, min, max, max, good, bad, good, bad. GB. So min, min, bad, or bad, good. So min, bad, min, good. Max bad, max good is like August. So you, you could play August, question mark, if you want to. Um, but I think feature is probably standard. I'm getting down here to other conventional lore recalls. Uh, everyone plays at least some version of new minor forcing. So that's like 1x, 1y, 1 no. Two clubs shows, you know, five plus and at least ten points. Five plus of their major and ten points. And, like, after that sequence, um, responders to make sure not to make a non-forcing bid in standard new minor forcing. So if it goes, like, 
a club, a heart, one no, two clubs, partner, or uh, two diamonds, partner, I have. Um, this is two other minor. Is how standard you minor forcing. So a club, a heart, one no, two diamonds, and if partner bids, um, two hearts. Um, two no by partner is enforcing, so they need to jump to three no if they have more than 11 points, essentially. Um, because you don't want to miss game. Um, because new minor, standard new minor, one way new minor, um, contains invitational hands in the new minor bid. Two way distinguishes invitational and game forcing, and so if you're playing two way, you don't have to jump in that awkward situation. Um, playing one way, Responder sometimes has to jump if they have too good a hand, and so you lose some of that space. So be careful. Um, everyone plays weak jump shifts. Um, probably not in competition, too. Um, the old style was, like, solo way. So, like, you know, a jump a, a jump in a major show, like, 18-plus, and either a solid major, an 18-plus balanced hand, or a fit bid. So, like... Five hearts and four clubs and 18 points, you know, like a really good hand. Um, that's not the way we play it anymore. Most people don't know what a solo way is unless they're a, a good advanced plus player. Um, they're definitely useful. Another modern treatment is called reverse flannery. Um, so that's playing like these jumps as showing five spades, four hearts. Because um, you like the sequence, like, you know, like a club a spade, whatever. Um, you know, a 4-4 four, four heart fit often gets concealed here um, if Responder has 5 spades and 4 hearts. So we'll... Some people play Reverse Flannery. So if Responder is less than a game force, they, they get the hearts with their 5 spades off their chest right away um, with those jump shifts. And that can be useful, um, especially in competition. They might bury you with length in the other minor or some nonsense, and you don't find... you just don't have the tools to find these four four fits. Um, so that's a useful gadget. I'm not going to talk about what those response structures looks like, but these are things to, that, that are good for your radar. Uh, everyone plays four three fours in a game. Um, other things I like to put down here is we play non-serious three no. So that's like a sequence like essentially like your two over one sequence. Like you've agreed, you've agreed on a suit. So what does three no mean here now? Um, the idea is 3 no isn't isn't a place to play because you've explicitly flagged a major suit to play. So 3 no might just show extra values and demand and suggest Q bidding. Um, it's very similar to the Jacoby auction, like a major 2 no 3 no um, If you have a Jacoby auction, obviously you have a 9 car major suit fit, you're not stopping a 3 no So 3 no just shows extras here. Um, it's a little weaker than this sequence, but like, so th rebidding three major versus three no, one should be stronger, one should be weaker. Um, that same principle applies elsewhere. It's, it's called a non-serious or serious three no, depending on where you put your, 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 your hand that demands cubids. Um, Rodwell, Eric Rodwell likes to flip three no in the serious cubids. Um, I like if you play the non-serious method, you you play it like Jacoby, 2 no, essentially what the 3 no means. It's a it's a weaker than um than serious like four level cues. Um it's good to put on your card. Um, the other thing that I could sometimes put down here is like two over one style. So if you play two over one as game force, there's these two common sequences. Um like does two no here show stoppers? Does two major here show a six or so you can either play two no either two major here either shows a six card suit or two no should show stoppers in the on bid suits and those styles conflict with each other so you should have a common agreement so you can play two major promise is six and then two no is like your default rebid if you're stuck and sometimes you're wrong side stoppers or you can play two major as your waiting bid and two no promises stoppers and so two major is often six but could sometimes be five. Um, there's some conventions to fix that. Um, but all in all, like, these are things to think about. Um, I put that down here. Um, if I'm talking through a convention card with partner, 
uh, with a new partner. Essentially, this is like how I go over a convention card. Um, I guess that lopsidedly was the point of this video. Was like, how do you think about filling out a convention card? Um, and walk through it. Um, I knew what I made. This video wasn't geared towards like the pure beginner player, but I wanted to. Uh, if I were to start filling out a card with a beginner par with like a beginner plus partner, and we needed to make a card, I would kind of go through a convention card in this manner. Um, so like this is kind of if I were to like step back, I think this is what like a pretty standard card with a lot of my partners at least looks like. Um, but certainly there's always a lot of differences you can have. Um. So I'm going to save this convention card. Um, in the next video, I will talk through, I guess, carding and some of these competitive bids, and it should be fun. Um, so thanks for watching, and take care.